In this video, traders, this is part two of trading clues from the overnight session. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. So I'm assuming you're here from part one. If you are, welcome back. If you're brand new on this and you've just seen this video thumbnail or whatever it is, you need to go back and check out part one because part one kind of precedes that and goes through a position uh, extension range and kind of this will make a lot more sense than the scribble it appears to be now. That being said, let's get rid of it and let's start afresh on this so we know where we are. Okay, so we talked about position of the overnight session. We talked about extension and range and how we're now adding things up to give ourselves that grade A plus setup. What are we talking about now? Response. So let's keep an example of a similar, I probably should have left it up there, but I, I want to kind of mix it up a little bit. Uh, let's say we've, and don't forget guys, uh, just to add a, a reminder, this only is useful if the prior day was important. Important meaning extension, key levels taken out, good range, good trend, something where you go, mm, people are taking notice, I'm interested. Like I say before, there's no use in implementing this and look at the overnight session of every single day because you just lose money. The important thing is you have a filtering process. It's okay, good. There's a good day one. How's the overnight session gonna guide me now for my strategy for day two? So let's look at that response. So imagine now we've got key levels here. We've got big key levels here and we might as well wrap it all in one. We've got some decent support. Let's imagine that actually, let's do it right. Let's imagine we had that there as our prior day support. And really useful kind of quick tip is that we look at the prior day, we draw our key levels on for the prior day, which is an important day. Don't forget, it's got to be an important day. We extrapolate that into the overnight session. So now we've got a kind of range, okay? And oh, we'll do this all together. So we'll do relative and response. So relative is also saying, okay, what's the normal overnight session? Let's say the normal overnight session is, uh, you know, 150 ticks. Okay, let's just say that's on Dow or SP500, it could be pips, doesn't matter, you get the point. And normal being, what has it been for the last kind of five days, 10 days, 30 days, up to you. But we wanna kind of look at it in the window of the current environment. It's 150 ticks, right? So we know the high and low is gonna be about 150 ticks. And we're expecting it to be at least that, at least that, if not more, because of the interesting day from before. Um, now, the, the, particularly if you have night session, it doesn't matter so much if it's less, we'll talk about that in a second. But let's say for example, now we've got a key level up here, a key level down here. It's the price response to those key levels that in the overnight session, that's gonna give us clues into the next session. Bear in mind the overnight session, there's no real volume. You can't lob around big size if you're a hedge fund manager, mutual fund, whoever it is, you ain't gonna be playing in the game uh, just because the volume's gonna be low. So we wanna see if we get down to here in the overnight session, how does it respond? Does it sit there? Does it, does it, does it bounce off straight away? Does it hold? You know, these are the clues because the next day, and again, let's assume that that's our opening bell here. This is our close and this is our open here. Whoops, if I can draw a P. <laughs> let's assume that that's our open now. You know, how does it respond? Now better would be if we kind of tested that level and pushed back up in the last kind of hour of the overnight session, we saw a little bit more buying. Because generally speaking, you know, as we come into the final hour before the open, we get a little bit more volume coming. We kind of a little bit more flurry as people start, start to position. So that's really useful as well. That kind of, I'm not gonna draw it because it will just clog up the chart a little bit, but that final hour is useful as well. And like I say, if that aligns with our hypothesis of, okay, I think we're gonna tag that high, We've held support of the prior day support in the overnight session. Let's go long here and look for a drive up, knowing that our opening drive is normally 60 ticks, 80 ticks, whatever the thing may be. That's well within striking range and more. Let's see how it responds, let's buy it. Or, you know, let's say the overnight session has uh, kind of tagged that high and struggled with that high and pushed down and, and pushed here. So what does that mean for us? It means that the next day, we've got to be careful because that high hasn't breached. And we don't expect a high to breach an overnight session. A really thick, decent high probably won't because there'll be residual orders left in the market. Uh, and maybe they'll be pulled in the overnight session anyway, but sure enough, if that's a decent level and someone wants to sell at that level, if they're gonna get a chance to lob a few contracts out overnight session, they're probably going to. But what it means for us is we need to see that clear before we're looking to go long there. 
we need to make sure that it's cleared in the in the in the actual regular trading hour session rather than just stabbing at it long just because it appears to be strong which is why we look at the overnight session because if we didn't have that we'd say oh it appears to be nice and strong it's good but we hadn't seen the test of that level in the overnight session to give us the clue that maybe oh that level is still valid let's wait until it clears it before we start looking at longs. We've still got room. We've got 300 pip, let's say a daily range on it. It's holding above it. We've only done 100, we've got 200 to go. Yeah, let's ride it. Let's go for it, let's go for it, have a sh take a shot. All right, so relative as well. So we looked at the range, we looked at the response. I, how does it respond to prior key levels on uh, the prior day's trade and bigger key levels from further back wherever they are? What's the price response to those? Now it could break through and hold above, in which case, you know, this one's just melted away. Maybe we're gonna get a pullback. I wouldn't wanna go straight in, you know, I wanna see pullback response. But if we get a pullback that, that straight away gets bought, we get an info, we've got prior day strength, we've got overnight session strength, we've got strength on the open. Let's ride it, let's see if we can get some decent volume out of this, or some decent moves out of this, should I say. So relative as well is, you know, how much do we encroach in the overnight session into the trade? Now, maybe this is, this, this is a little bit off scale because it looks like we've encroached kind of into the 50% of the move, which we probably wouldn't want in reality. But if we assume that it was more like this, and this is the top 10%, how's the overnight session extension? Well, relative to the prior day's trade, it's in the upper 10%. And the upper 10% is good. It means we haven't kind of done some, we haven't undone all that work, especially if we look at the final hour and go and check out the trading clues from the, from the close, for more info on that. But the final hour is interesting. If the overnight session has kind of held that or half of that, then we assuming that the strength has continued. We're assuming that there is continued buying and that again, the assumption is that that will continue at the open. Do you want to start chasing stuff? Probably not, which is why we come up with our overnight session support levels. Because we say, okay, well, we'll probably buy at that level. Um, so it's relative, you know, where's the price relative? If the overnight session starts to come right deep into the trend and we're opening kind of down here, then I'm not so keen on taking that long. I just don't want to see that because I think the supply demand imbalance is too swinging around. Uh, and for me, that's a little bit too uncertain. I might, I might, I would want to wait and see how the open responds. Now the open will trump the overnight session for me. If the open's stupidly strong and kind of closes at highs, and then I'll look for a further afternoon session trade or uh, just pre lunchtime trade, then that's fine. That makes sense. But this would be okay if I've seen something that's. Tick in the box, tick in the box. Okay, I can take a trade in the first hour. Tick in the box, not tick in the box. Okay, I wanna see a little bit more confirmation that first hour before I take the trade later on in the day, whatever that hypothesis may be, whether that is to continue the trend. And this is just one example, by the way, guys, one example, we just scratch the surface with this. Make sure you are subscribed You know, for more stuff we dig in. And one example of an uptrend, we've got the downtrend, we've got the range day, we've got the reversal day, we've got the V-shaped day, we've got the, news day, all those different things and how the overnight session uh, fits in with that. But this is kind of gives you an idea. Positioning overnight session, extension, the range, size of the overnight session, the price response to key levels in that overnight session and relative. So where is it relative to the prior day's trade? Has it taken out highs? Has it taken out lows? How much has it encroached on the trend? Food for thought, if you like this kind of stuff, a thumbs up is appreciated. And if you are a subscriber, thanks for your support. See you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.